My name is Jason Roberts. I'm an inspector and a food safety consultant to the bottled water industry. As a consultant, I travel the nation helping companies and people up their game. I have a passion to help and I absolutely love what I do. Let's talk about the FDA food safety plan. This is the binder for a food safety plan. Right on the very front, we have that it's from the CFR 21, the Code of Federal Regulations 117.126, the food safety plan for the fictitious company Acme Bottled Water with our information, our FDA registration at the bottom. In this food safety plan, we also have an electronic copy of the plan on a thumbnail and a business card to the person who put it together. Yours truly. First page is our food safety plan for Acme Bottled Water. Our table of contents, broken down into different sections based on the different color coding. Our management commitment, stating that the management will abide by and provide support to the food safety plan and the elements inside. And then we get to the actual food safety plan requirements themselves. So in here we have 117.126, the food safety plan. You must prepare or have prepared and implement a written food safety plan. The food safety plan must be overseen or created by a preventative controls qualified individual. Contents of the plan must include a written hazard analysis, the written preventative controls, the written supply chain program, a written recall program, the written procedures for monitoring the implementation of the preventative controls, the written corrective actions procedures as required, and the written verification procedures. I've broken my binder down into different tabs. So the first part, the written hazard analysis, I have a whole tab dedicated to just the hazard analysis. The written preventative controls, my second tab is the preventative controls based upon that hazard analysis. The written procedures for monitoring and implementation of the preventative controls, that's my very next tab, the pre uh, process preventative controls verification and monitoring. So we're letting the auditor know, hey, we know exactly what needs to go into our food safety plan. So in this first section, it's really just an introduction that I like to create. We've got our food safety plan scope. We have our facility information. We've got our food safety team and how often they meet and what sort of training each member of the team has had. We've got an example of the review sheet that they put together every time they have a meeting. We have an example of the um, risk matrix that we're going to use for those hazard analyses. We have a product description of, in this case, it's Acme Bottle Water, and this is the purified drinking water, characteristics, packaging, shelf life, labeling, etc. So this is the product description. Next, we have our product ingredients and materials for whatever that product description was. We've got a flow chart showing our process. In this particular case, for this water company, we've got a flow chart showing how they return the coolers and how they clean and sanitize them. So now we come to our very first tab of the hazard analysis. So once again, we sell, tell the auditor or whoever's looking at it, hey, we understand that we need to do a, a hazard analysis on certain things. And it says, Right here, section one, the written hazard analysis as required. So let's do our hazard analysis. This was the first, number one on our requirements. Now, when you dig further into the regulations, uh, 117.130, when it talks about the hazard analysis, says you must consider the effect of the following. So, number one, the formulation of the food, the condition, function, design of the equipment, raw materials, transportation, manufacturing procedures, packaging, labeling activities, storage and distribution intended or foreseeable use, sanitation employee, including employee hygiene. When we've done HACCP plans in the past, we did a hazard analysis on our process on, uh, uh, let's see where it was, right, uh, right here, manufacturing process procedures. We want to know if we're going to contaminate our product during our processing. The regulations for 21 CFR 117 says, you know, that's great, but you also need to do a hazard analysis on the formulation, okay? You also need to do a hazard analysis on the storage and distribution. So, for example, in a water company, we might say, well, we never do a hazard analysis on transportation practices. But when I'm writing this book, I don't really care because it says right there in black and white that I need to have a bottle or a uh, hazard analysis on these following nine characteristics. So I go ahead and do a hazard analysis on each one of those nine characteristics. For example, here's our first one, the formulation of the food. So I talk about what it is. 
I talk what the formulation is, and then I do my risk matrix to assign it a score. In this case, our hazard score became a two. We don't need to do anything with it. So when we talk about a hazard, we want to talk about hazards that are known or reasonably foreseeable, not a what if. So in our case, we talk about biological hazards, microbiological hazards, chemical hazards, physical hazards, and then we're going to assess the severity of these hazards if they were to occur. Okay, so there's our uh, hazard analysis of the formulation of the food, condition, function, design of the facility and the equipment, a hazard analysis on our manufacturing process and procedures continued. And so we do one, uh, so here we have our hazard analysis, the severity of illness or injury. So if something did happen, what is the severity? And so we explain a little bit about that. Again, I'm not going to go into great detail, just going to show you what you need to have in your book. Hazard analysis on raw materials and other ingredients. Hazard analysis on transportation practices. Hazard analysis, packaging activities, labeling activity. Hazard analysis of storage and distribution. Hazard analysis on intended or reasonably foreseeable use. Hazard analysis on sanitation, including employee hygiene. Okay, so that, those were our hazard analysis. That was a required uh, uh, segment. Let's move on to the next one. We now talk about our preventative controls. So during those hazard analysis, did we identify anything that required a preventative control? Right here, the regs 126 tells us the written preventative controls need to be in our food safety plan. So in this particular case for this fictitious company, we did identify one step that required a process preventative control. So we talk about what the limits are, what the monitoring, what the corrective actions, what the verification, what the records are, testing procedures. Uh, so we get real specific about what we're going to do during that step of the PPC. So in this particular company, we talk about our ozone procedures, uh, safety of ozone, things like that. Next, we go on to another required uh, state, and that is the process preventative control verification and monitoring. It says right here, written verification procedures. So let's move on to that. So since this company is talking about ozone for their uh, process preventative control, this is an example of the sheet they would fill out each day that was showing the uh, normal amounts of ozone that they're running and the time, and then we've got the frequency and the standards of everything that it should be. Uh, two copies in here, one's an example for the book and the other one is a, a copy that the company can make that if they run out. So we've also got our in-house lab results. Again, we're talking about the lack of ozone being a process preventative control. So we're going to have all of our supporting documentation in here about how we know the ozone is actually going okay. We've got our equipment calibration, calibration processes, uh, we've got our environmental monitoring, and next we've got our certificates and training. So here we're going to put all of our certificates and trainings for not just the employees, but also the company. So in this case, the, all the employees receive allergen uh, training. They sign off on this. Uh, all the employees receive GMP and security training. They sign off on this. We've got our cooler intake procedures. This is under employee training for the people that uh, refurbish or clean coolers. Next, we have our sanitation controls. Uh, this is called a master sanitation sheet. So we talk about all the steps that we do when we sanitize, whether we do it daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, what the agent is that we use, the person who's responsible, and then the verification that the job is getting done. So we talk about the process of how to make certain sanitation uh, fluids that we need. Other controls, standard operating procedures. This is really where all your other associated paperwork goes in that might not fall into some of those easier categories. In this case, we've got a required uh, quarterly cap and closure tests. Uh, we've got a, a statement on how to actually do that. We have our uh, specific security controls, uh, addresses inside security, outside security, shipping, receiving, things like that. Our source water micro log. Again, this is just for all the other documentation. We've got our daily uh, startup and shutdown procedures that our uh, uh, production manager fills out each day. Our visitor sign-in sheets. So those were uh, other SOPs and documents. Supply chain program. So the written supply chain program. Here's the deal on your supply chain program. It's all about who controls the hazards. If you control the hazards at your own plant, then you don't need to have one from your suppliers or a documented one. If other people are controlling your hazards, you need to have a written supply chain program. 
if you get your product packaged from somebody else and has your name on it in a co-packing situation, you need to have a supply chain program ensuring that you are receiving a quality product. If you are just accepting all the materials in and then you're creating the product on your end and you are the one that is absolutely in control of all the hazards of your product 100%, then you don't need to have a written supply chain program, but I do encourage you to have a supplier approval program, a little bit different. Supply chain program is who controls the hazards. If someone else is controlling the hazards, you need to do a few additional steps. Supplier approval program is just, hey, you wanna do business with me? These are the criteria that you need to meet, the tumblers that you need to meet. Again, in another video, I will explain the difference between the two and what the requirements are separately. So in our book, we have our vendor approval program. We also have our certificate of approvals or our certificates analysis, our COAs. And as stated, we have our written recall program right there in number four in the regs. So your recall program also should contain your mock recall form. It should be filled out. You should be doing a mock recall at least once a year. The uh, worst way to learn how to do a recall is when you're smack dab in the middle of one. So that is the end of the required sections. In this particular case, I also include a copy of all the pertinent 21 CFR regs that uh, pertain to the bottled water industry. I have them broken down by different tabs here, whether it's labeling or production, things like that. So let's go back to the very first part. Food safety plan requirements. So we must have a written food safety plan. Here it is, right here in this binder. It must be prepared by a preventative controls qualified individual. I have included my PCQI certificate in the back so the auditor knows that this was an official binder. So we've got those two down right there. It must include the written hazard analysis. There it is right there. It must include the written preventative controls. There it is right there. It must include the written supply chain program. We addressed that right there, supply chain program. It must have a written recall program. We included that right there at the recall program. It must have written procedures for monitoring the implementation of the preventative controls. We have this right here in our preventative controls verification and monitoring. We must have written corrective actions as required. That is right here in the PPC uh, verification and monitoring. Uh, and we have to have the written verification procedures that's also under PPC verification and monitoring. There is no one right way to make your food safety plan finder. As long as you have this required information in there, you are good to go. It's just a matter of how do you want to present it. Being an auditor, I like to see it really laid out for me, very easy for me to navigate. So there's our food safety plan. Again, we have it on a thumbnail, so you can also modify it, look at it, do whatever you need to. Business card of the person that wrote it. Close it down. Good luck to you. You're going to have a great time. Take care.